In this video, I want to chat about picking datums. So I get this question all the time, you know, what features are supposed to be datums on the part I'm designing? So I've got an example and then we go through it. This is a machinist clamp or a parallel clamp. The idea, and we've got to talk about this to know what the datums are, is that you put a part in here and then you close down on these screws and you hold it together. A lot of times this is used to hold two parts together so you can go through a machining operation with both of them at the same time. Now, of course, this one is really tiny, but you know, they make very large ones. These are really similar to ones they use in woodworking as well. So in order to pick the datums, we need requirements. Now, if you're designing parts, a lot of times this comes from engineering. Uh, sometimes you'll be doing the requirements yourself. It all just depends on what kind of company you're working for. Requirements can be very specific and, you know, like, you know, clearance of five thousandths, you know, maximum allowance, blah, blah, blah. Or it can be more general. These are going to be a little bit more general. What we want and I've got these giant ones to explain a little bit better, is for them to fit together and have very little variation. So when we're grabbing a part in the front of the jaws, we want as much, this to be as flat as possible so it gets a good grip on whatever it's grabbing. Another thing we want is we don't want a lot of overbite with these two jaws, right? We want them to be pretty much even when it closes down on something. We want the jaws to be very parallel and not necessarily accurate to size, that'd be great too, so that when we put them on a table, right, we could put something else on top of it. So you might be grabbing this in a vise and you want it to be pretty square. Not as square as something like a one, two, three block, which has to be dimensionally accurate and very square. But as this was kind of a machine shop tool, you want to be able to trust that it's pretty accurate. So let's talk about how we'll achieve some of those things. Now the first thing on both of these parts, and I think everybody can agree with me on this, this surface right here is datum A. Okay, It's the largest surface. It's the surface that mates an assembly. It's where all our measurements should come from. Now datum B is a little bit different. So we've established this is datum A. We need a plane that's 90 degrees to that. So it could be in this orientation, this orientation. A couple things it could be. We could choose this small plane right here. We could choose one of the holes or both of the holes actually. We could choose a center plane going through the part. We could favor one side or favor the other side. All of those could be datums. Now, in my opinion for this part, I would choose a center plane datum going through the middle of the part that's developed by this plane and this plane. The reason is that you don't favor one side or the other. So when you're using this, uh, you know, on the shop or whatever, you're not going to always measure everything from one side. You might just as easily flip it over and you want that side to be uh, parallel as well. Now the center plane datum is a little bit more difficult to inspect. Uh, the idea is you should put it in a centering vise, find the zero, and then locate the holes. If it's both sides are very, very parallel, sometimes you can get away with just measuring from one side. Uh, it all just depends. But you want to put you know, the ideal thing on the drawing if possible so the inspection team can figure that out later. Now, datum C. In order to locate the holes with the position, we're going to need three datums for this part. The reason is that if we only had datum A and datum B, there's nothing to locate the holes in this direction. They'd be located in this direction, but not this direction. So we need some place on the part to measure the location of the holes from in that direction. It could be this rounded side. We could make that a datum target and make it a line. It could be the small plane in the front, or it could be one of the holes. Now, again, I would recommend choosing this plane right here. The reason being is that at assembly, you want these to line up so it's a good place to measure from. So you're going to measure the location of these holes from this surface right here. 
And that is our three datum setup. From that, we can establish position tolerances for all the holes. We could do a profile for you know, the rest of the surface of the part. And that would be our inspection setup. Essentially, our 000, X, Y, and Z would be this little corner right here, kind of going through the middle of the part. It makes sense because that's where all the action happens when you're actually using the tool, right? When you go to grab something with the tool, it's going to be in this area, okay? Now, you could make an argument, well, why not use the two holes? If we look at these parts like so, you can see that the holes line up everything else in the part. So if the holes are good, you could, you could conceivably measure everything from there. And that is a valid technique, especially for this one that would have two threaded holes going through it. You could make that datum B and then measure everything from those. Essentially, in that case, the zero would be in between the two holes. Uh, that is a valid option. I would recommend that if the outside of the part mated to air. What I mean by that is that if it never had any requirement to do anything but exist. But we established in this part, when we put it on a table, we have orientation requirements. We want it to be both sides to be more or less parallel. So I wouldn't recommend doing the two hole datum. The other problem with it, it's easy enough for this two threaded holes. This part is gonna have a clearance hole and then a blind hole for a pilot. So it'd be a little bit more difficult to inspect. Now, those are flat parts. We established our datum reference frame for those. We also have two uh, you know, threaded screws that goes through. Now, just real quick, one of them has a pilot to fit in here. That's what keeps the part from rotating like so, okay? And then the other one doesn't have a pilot. It just goes straight through. Both of them are gonna be dimension, or uh, have the same datums. This thread is gonna be datum A. It's what locates everything else on this part, right? When it threads in, because threads you know, center things automatically, it's gonna kinda find its own, and you're gonna measure everything else from there. I can't, really can't think of any other really good way to do it. The only other option, you would make this, you know, datum A, but you could establish the datum as the major diameter so that you could more easily put it in a V block and measure everything else from it. Now datum B, I can show this visually. Imagine we assemble this part, right? Where does it go? Number one, it threads through the part. Number two, it touches right there. This surface, the bottom of the shoulder, is a great a secondary datum. And then this part doesn't need a tertiary datum. You can find everything from there. It's symmetric. You got this one hole going through the middle, but it's only one hole, so it doesn't matter what orientation it's in. And then you can do all your profile and position from just those two datums. Now, that's just a quick example of applying datums. I'll put a, a drawing up or put a link in the description for you if you want to see how I did it with all of the GD and T. Uh, it takes time to get used to putting datums on parts, but it's really important because it's where one, your measurements are going to come from, and two, how the part gets set up to manufacture and inspect. So as you get more used to reading datum reference frames, you can see a lot of what the designer intends the part to do, at least how it mates at assembly. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, check out the channel for more of these videos coming soon.